And you'll see uh, that uh, some of these tests are starting to gather a lot of traction, especially in the transportation where people are running through the gate late for the train, they swipe it and they go. But I think we'll see more and more of that in the stores. The big difficulty is there's too many parties in that. You have now on top of all the banking authorities and states and supervisory authorities of financial transaction, you have the NCC and the uh, NFC that are going to look into that, and it, it makes it a little more complicated, and the carriers are a little uh, protective of their different networks. But it's going to take off as well. M-commerce, the ability to shop on your phone, is also taking off. During the holiday season, it grew 300%. And it's estimated now to be, well, actually, it's very interesting, because Juniper did the research four years ago, in 05, actually five years ago, and they estimated that there was about 15 million of M-commerce. And they said that by 2010, they expect it to be 10 billion. What it really turned out to be is they were wrong. We're at 100 billion now, 10 times more than what I expected in global M-commerce. So people are buying more and more on phones. And to give you an idea, in 05, there was 150 mobile-friendly e-commerce websites that you could view on a mobile and interact with in a simple manner to be able to purchase. Now that statistic is 3 million. So 3 million e-commerce retailers have adapted their websites for people to be able to shop on their phones. And I mean, it's, a, it's great when you think about it. You could be at the shop, you can be online, you can comparison shop for prices, you can comparison shop for quality, you can look at different places to get it. You're in a street, you want to find a pair of shoes, you can geolocate when is the store, and the store, knowing that you are here, can send you an offer and tell you, why don't you come to my store, I'll give you 10% off. So the possibilities are endless. And we're going to use our cell phones more and more for financial transactions, and we have to be ready to support that and to be part of that ecosystem. And what I mentioned about coupons and so on brings me to my last point, which was the social commerce. That's kind of a new term, but it, it's based on a simple research. People are three times more likely to buy something that is recommended by a friend than they are to buy something they saw in an advertisement, even something that they saw in a review, because they trust a friend much more than they would trust some anonymous source of information. And it started, I mean, a lot of you have learned about Groupon, companies being valued in the billions. Uh, everybody's trying to buy it. They're trying to combine the ability for you to be able to comparison shop, to get a recommendation from a friend, to be able to send competitive offers, and uh, to find a product in many, many stores and decide where you want to buy it. It's amazingly convenient. Uh, I think it started with Amazon, personally, because if you remember with the early days of Amazon, they were the first one to say, if you bought this, you may also like these other things. And it was an upsell, but it also tracked your preferences and presented related items. And then you bought something and it gave you a discount for the next thing you wanted to buy, or it gives you a bundled offer. They didn't have friends recommendation, but guess who's coming up with this? How many people have Facebook accounts here? Uh, quite a few. And it's changing. I mean, that's how I'm from Lebanon originally. I communicate. I found all my high school friends on Facebook, and we all communicate this way. So from there, to be able to exchange value, send money, exchange recommendation, is a very, very short step. Facebook actually just this year, last year, in 2010, incorporated a company called Facebook Payments in Florida. And they, their stated business purpose is any and all lawful business purposes, which is the very generic, we don't want to tell you what we're going to do, but you better be ready. Uh, Facebook has started e-commerce. They still have a very clunky interface. It's not convenient to shop on Facebook. But Facebook has taken over the world of Internet by storm. It's become its own world of Internet, basically, because a lot of sites are experiencing more visits on their Facebook page than they do on their corporate site. For example, Coca-Cola, one of the world's biggest brands. They get, for every six visits they get on their website, they get 11,000 visits on their Facebook page. So there's more people looking at a brand on Facebook, more and more depending on the brand, than there is on the internet. And from there, they can drive financial transaction, they can drive product recommendation. And the reason it's working, it's cheap and it's easy. They can post something on your wall, they can put banners on your Facebook page. Every time your friend mentions, I was outside having a Coca-Cola, they can pop an advertisement with a link to their Facebook page onto your wall and the walls of all your friends and drive traffic. So it's a very trusted 
and a very simple and very economical way to get customers. And they're working really hard on creating a good e-commerce interface so that people start buying stuff off of Facebook. They're also working on their payments thing, and we know we've all heard about Facebook credits. So now you can you go online, you buy a bunch of Facebook credits, and you can spend it. Mostly today used for games, but there's nothing stopping them from allowing me to send you 100 Facebook credits, which becomes a money transfer, or spending 100 Facebook credits on a shop and buying items. So look for that to come very quickly. And, and they can do great things. They can, on top of the referrals, they can do coupons. They can do things like, well, you're looking at the Nike uh, like page. They can pop up a banner that will say, why don't you buy Adidas, and we'll give you 20% less. Actually, the one that started a very interesting piece of software is Amazon. Now, if you go on Amazon, you know how you can create a wish list. Well, I was shopping a couple of weeks ago for a hard drive, and they presented an offer that says, here's a little widget you can put on your web browser, and you can save your wish list from any website you visit. I'm like, oh, that's convenient, because I shopped on Amazon, and I shopped on eBay, and a couple of other sites. Now I can save them all to the Amazon wish list. Well, that's great for me, but it's even greater for them, because now they know what I'm looking at, at which e-commerce site I'm looking at it, what is the price, what are the shipping conditions, because they can load everything from that website. And all they have to do is say, okay, well, you looked at three different pairs of sneakers, why don't we present you an offer from Amazon that says, buy that same pair of sneakers you were looking at for 10% less. And the, the things that can happen are amazing. Which brings us to our world, the world of payment. So, what does this mean for us? The landscape is changing. You know, we, the digital world is changing our life exponentially. The power is shifting. The power is shifting from retailers. It's shifting from companies to consumers and to stores. It's, I mean, you know, the internet today is starting revolutions because people can get educated and communicate very well. You've seen it in North Africa and the Middle East. So it's gonna revo revolutionize the world of payment as well. Uh, it's gonna empower consumers. Consumers are gonna have more choices to decide and they're gonna have more choices to pay. And that's where we come in. I think, I mean, you can see there's, uh, e-commerce is a threat in general. Um, P2P payments can follow very quickly and that's a lot of the core of our business. But there's a role for us to play. If you look at the strategic advantages that MSBs have, we have a very strong retail network. We have a very strong brand loyalty from our customers, customers that not a lot of companies can talk to. I mean, everybody, a US, every time a US company wants to talk to the Hispanic consumer, they go to Univision. Univision doesn't mean financial transactions to the immigrants in the US. Money transfer companies do. There's a much higher level of trust. There's a much higher level of linkage in their mind between doing a financial transaction and a MSB or money transfer brand. There's loyalty. A lot of people have been using these brands for years and years on time. The, the stores are conveniently located. There's also a lot of expertise, uh, obviously, in uh, anti-money laundering and Bank Secrecy Act and compliance procedures, which is core to what the MSB business is about. And there's a global settlement compliance platform. So it's not only the compliance aspect, but we're connected to each other, and we have a way of sending financial transactions back and forth. So from there, everything is possible. I think every company should be looking at loading cash. I mean, today, if you uh, take the Western Union prepaid card, for example, they pay $4.95 for every load. Well, that's as good as any money transfer that I know when you look at the net revenue. You know, we make, what, $2 on... El Salvador and maybe four dollars on Mexico on a good day, net basis, net revenue. So 4.95 doesn't look too bad as a transaction. But I think the challenge for us will be to figure out not to be only a trans transactional point, but to have a stake in the lifetime value of the customer because the customer is going to load three, four hundred dollars. What you want though is to get the interchange where he's going to spend those three, four hundred dollars to be able to take a part of whatever fees the prepaid card company will impose on them. Those are getting, by the way, regulated a lot. But that's a big opportunity to me, and I think we need to all think of how we can leverage this. How we can load money into mobile phones, how we can load money into e-wallets. So this whole growth in e-commerce can be part of something that we experience as a group. There's today a company, for example, uh, I'll mention Ucash, where you can go in about, uh, I think there are 55 countries now, 270,000 points. And actually, Maggie Express was a money transfer payer in Argentina and some of the countries is also part of the network, where you can go and buy a voucher. 
You put a hundred dollars, they give you a number, you go on the internet, put the number, and now it's like having a card. And now you can shop. So that's something we should be aggressively looking at. Um, because broadband is everywhere, and we are everywhere. And that's a way to promote it. Um, we have to think if our compliance and global settlement capabilities can play. You know, one of the, as you, we had a presentation in Miami about mobile commerce and, and mobile phones, and uh, Western Union came, and one of their big claim to fame is they want to be able to connect all the mobile wallets in the world. Well, you know, we could do that as well. But one of the things I would advise you to consider, and a conference like this is a great place to talk about, is whether we can create a standard messaging between all the money transfer companies to be able to exchange value. Because today, we are like the mobile wallets. We are fragmented. You know, Siege cannot send to Vigo, Vigo cannot send to uh, Bari. It's all walled in. If we could cr do like Swift, if we could create a standard messaging that we could exchange between all the platform, now all of a sudden, an association of money transmitters could go to Walmart, could go to AT&T and say, look, I have under my fingers 70,000 points where the immigrants can load money. Let's talk. We could go to Amazon and make a deal. And you know how much these guys charge? Ucash charges 14% for the ability to load cash. Talk about profitability. I mean, we live in an environment where we challenge profitability-wise, and you can make 14 15% on a load when it comes to e-commerce. You could make five bucks almost on a load when it comes to prepaid. And mobile phones will follow very quickly. Uh, shopping on mobile phones for games for kids when they, when they do the shopping, Boku and Zong charge 30% to the e-commerce site. So there's a lot of money to be made. So in conclusion, I could tell you a lot more about what's happening. I'll be happy to talk to you after the conference, but we're running out of time. Uh, there's a big threat to our business on the e-commerce side, on the P2P side, but everywhere there's threat, there's an opportunity. So I think we have a, a great future in front of us. We can leverage what we have to take advantage of it. So thank you very much, and have a great conference.